I'm gonna give a um, short, and I would say practical presentation on how to improve your visualization experience in BMD, meaning that you can, um, for example, uh, get better quality images for your for your papers, for your posters, for any any type of uh, um, uh, material that it, you can generate. So this is gonna be, as I said, a, a more practical part. So I'm gonna I have some some slides, but mostly it's gonna be a, a couple of demos, and um, hopefully I, I have enough time. And if not. We can continue these demos on in the afternoon today or on Friday. So the outline of this presentation or the main ideas, uh, this came up when we we're discussing about uh, okay, there's there is a lot of nice material being produced in the group. I have some experience, uh, some examples here. Uh, as John mentioned, this is like the chromatophore, um, um, these um, very large systems with nice. Uh, colors and materials. This is a new, probably haven't been um, shown yet in this in this um, this workshop, something from uh, one of our students uh, that uses uh, reflective materials. And this is something that I'm going to emphasize today. Uh, this is another example of an animation that has both um, information from a quantum mechanical simulation in forms of these orbit molecular orbitals that are like uh, nice color and also some uh, depth of field and other uh, display options that uh, basically blur uh, the background so you can emphasize um, the attention from the viewer has uh, is go directly to what you want this, these molecules in the front and this is something that I'm um, that I did that is uh, one from from one of our uh, simulations from uh, also quantum mechanical uh, this is a hybrid QMM simulation and I'm gonna show uh, as part of one of my examples in the demo okay so there are so many examples of nice images nice quality um, uh, publication figures uh, in the cover as well so let's say okay let's recap everything that we we have done in the last uh, couple of years and try to have some concrete messages so that people can use this um, um, without having to, uh, of course, this not does not replace all the nice tutorials that we have in our website, but it's gonna be like, okay, focus on this part of this tutorial because this is important. Check this part, check this, check this, and so on and so forth. Um, and also at the end, I'm gonna show um, in the demo some of the new uh, features that John mentioned, the uh, real-time ray tracing render mode and how it how it connects to, uh, hopefully it connects to the, what I'm trying to explain in demo. Okay, let's continue. So the first thing I want to mention, I was I was going over this and I, I this is one of the last things that I add and I think it's probably the most important thing in this talk, uh, especially for novice users is that you, you take a lot of time, you do a lot of work to create your scene in BMD, uh, change representations, that means selecting atoms, coloring schemes, materials, any other um, features that the, the representation has. You can, uh, you can spend a lot of time having uh, navigating through the scene, looking for the perfect position of the camera and the viewing angle and the focus and other display options and other customization things like, for example, you can create your own colors, as John said, you can create, as gonna, I'm gonna show you an example of, you can create your own materials with different properties. So you spend a lot of time maybe creating your perfect scene and you, you need to know that you can save that, save that uh, into a VMD state and then make use of that so that you can load that BMD state afterwards when you close BMD you go, and you're in, in a different computer, for example, um, so that you don't need to uh, lose all the time. That's like, I, I know this may sound trivial, but I think it's super important. And I recommend you to go, if you haven't, to the BMD tutorial section 1.5, which is a single page. And it's very, very straightforward. You can not, learn how to do this, how to, um, I think it's one of the most important things anytime you work with VND, but especially if you're interested in creating quality 
publication ready figures for for your for your for your material so that's one of the things that i wanted to emphasize um the second part is uh, more uh, tuned to to this advanced visualization so as i said so one of the one part that it's basically sometimes it's maybe neglected from the graphical representation that you create when you select your molecules like your protein your drug or whatnot maybe one of the last things that you play around is the materials that you use so and that's fine because that is only related to the quality of the figure it doesn't have to do with the selection per se it doesn't have to do with the uh, but it but what i'm trying to say is that that is also something that you can use to make your figure more um uh, understandable more features so uh, a more um for example you can focus on one part of your system with a nice material that has a nice um, contrast with the other materials for example so that way your image not only conveys the correct selection of things that you want to do in the system but also you can inf uh, you can guide the um, the eyes of the of the of the viewer towards something that you think is particularly important okay so that being said there are a lot of options here and i'm not going to cover everything so but you you should be aware uh, and this is also in uh, in detail explained in the in the vmd tutorial in the main tutorial in section 1.6 but i wanted to say that um you can play around with the predefined materials i'm going to show you how now in the demo but these predefined materials have different graphical properties so and you can go to the materials window this is done this is shown in, in the tutorial uh, and you can see here that there are these properties ambient diffuse specular shyness and how and you can check how these different materials have different properties and and, and the meaning of each property uh, is is already explained here in this in this website so if you look for if if you google uh, bmd materials that's the first thing that you, you have uh, if you know, the first result is going to be here but I wanted, I wanted to emphasize something that it might not be clear from all these tutorials and and, I, and especially because there is a lot of information going over. Um, uh, the, what I'm trying to say is that some of the advanced materials, those that appear at, at the bottom in your in your drop down menu in the materials, I'm going to show you here in the, in the live demo, those advanced materials, in order to get the best from them, you may need to adjust some uh, uh, other features from BMD, namely the render mode and the disp some of the display settings. Okay, so sometimes you may be changing the material and and seeing like oh, I don't see any changes or I don't like this material because it doesn't show any any spe special things. But that's because again you need to uh, take a little more time and play with different features of BMD so that you can get the best from that material. One example is, for example, all these AO, that's these materials that start with AO, which uh, refers to ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion is one of the ray tracing display options. So if you don't use that a a ambient occlusion option, your materials, these AO materials are not gonna look that good. So I'm gonna show you uh, what I mean by that. So that being said, I'm gonna go over a, a live demo where I have a few examples and uh, let's see if this works so i'm gonna load bmd so here i have um, um one of the simplest examples which is a, a remember we did uh, a simulation in in quick md from for uh, from ubiquitin so this is actually ubiquitin in 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 a water box so basically it will be the system that you get from QuickMD, or if you did, or if you want to get this exact file, this is a file from the NAMD tutorial. It was one of the first files in the NAMD tutorial. Um, because the NAMD tutorial, one of the first sections, allows, uh, helps you create this water box, basically solvate your system. So if you if you want, you can follow along, or you can go ahead and, and um, find this file, and, or you can go and check, uh, load any system you have that is solvated, and that's going to be the same. So the first thing that I want to show is something relatively simple to do, but I think uh, we have a lot of questions um, from uh, in our BMD uh, mailing list how to do this, and sometimes people don't know this. So what I'm trying to say is that how can you use and make use of uh, transparent materials 
and how to get the best from them. So I'm going to follow um, a few a few things. So what I want to want to I want to do is first I want to create a few representations to clean up this a little bit and make use of these new materials. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take the default representation and replace this selection from uh, with protein. So now I have all the, the protein from ubiquitin, and I'm going to use this. Uh, this is something I already did um, on Monday, but uh, let me do it again. I think I did it also on uh, Tuesday. So I, I want to change this for new cartoon, OK? I want to create another representation, which is only for the waters. And I'm going to create. So if I use the default representation, which is lines, um, I mean, I personally don't like this. And also, usually when you try to visualize a system, you are not particularly interested in the solvent. Maybe you are interested in some water molecules that are close to your res uh, the important residues. But in usually the environment is there, but you don't you want to hint that it's there, but you don't want it to be explicitly there. Okay, because it, it's a little bit uh, it's problematic if you want to focus on your protein. So one thing that you can do, uh, and this is something uh, that I wanted to show you how to create this transparent water box of the appearance of a, an environment there. So one of the, um, you can use a drawing method that is called QuickSurf. And since the default material is opaque, now the, the, the surface of this water box is basically not allowing me to see through, okay? And that's normal. So if you change this to transparent, which is also one of the, uh, simple uh, materials. Now you can see that, uh, okay, first of all, let me go back. So the first thing I wanted to say is that this is very rough, right? It's like, uh, because it, 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 uh, this QuickSurf basically has a lot of parameters like the resolution, rate, scale, density, iso value, and so on and so forth, that basically tells you, okay, I'm drawing a surface around each and every molecule, okay? So, but usually I'm not interested in each particular molecule in, the, in my solvent, I just want, to have an idea of they are there. So one thing you can do is you can increase this uh, radio scale. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, for example, to two and the ISO value to, I think I ended up with something like uh, 10. Yeah. So now I have like a more smooth cube, okay? Which is my water box. And, and now I can go, okay, let's do, let's make this transparent. So now I do this transparent. I was going to say, uh, I was going to say one thing, Mariano. Yeah. The, uh, the resolution slider, I don't know if you want to show them dragging that back and forth, but the design of that particular control, the resolution slider there on the uh, quick surf is intended so that it preserves the boundary at the mm -hmm. roughly the same position you would have for atomic detail, it tries to. So if you drag it along. Yeah. There. So another thing, yeah, I, I, I play a little bit with the resolution, for example. So if you click default, yeah. it goes back to the default setting. So you yeah. can, uh, as John said, you can play with the resolution. So for example, I can go to, let's say a resolution of three or something like that. And, um, the, and you'll see that also while you're dragging it, 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 it uses a reduced detail uh, calculation but when mm -hmm. you release its full resolution, uh, you right. can actually, if you press the shift key while you drag, it will actually force it to do full resolution the whole time. So that's a little uh, detail, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, you can see, this gives you a single control you can drag and it tries to maintain the same boundary. So if you're trying to show the exact edge of the unit cell, for example, doing it with that control is maybe a little easier than if you adjust the three detail parameters individually, yeah. but just, right. just a little tip. Yeah. Yeah. So let, okay, let's use this. This is quite, um, I mean, for, for my purpose, it's going to be fine because what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to show this how, how transparent looks. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. So the first thing I wanted to say is, okay, the, I remember that I said that some of the materials require some of, some additional features to be changed. So one of the main uh, main um, things that you can change is the render mode. So the default render mode, if you go to display in the main window here, yeah, render mode. So the normal is the default one. And it's, um, as, as it says, the default one is the one that supposedly every, every computer 
has every to, has every to. even the worst gpus on earth should be able to handle normal yeah <laughs> so but then if um now we are going to go into a little bit adva more advanced um, usage and probably you need a better uh, computer for that. But I assume, I would, I would argue that everyone at this point has a computer that it's uh, good enough to run at least the GLSL. Yeah, so this, this is mostly just a question of if they have bugs. If they have a working driver, every reasonable modern machine should do GL GLSL. Okay, so let's use free. GLSL and see what, what's the difference. So now you can see that actually, whereas the normal display mode, uh, render mode has these kind of like dotted um, points to represent the transparency. Now the GLSL is a little bit more smooth and it's a little bit better quality. But now let's go to a, a different material that is also transparent or translucent. So as you can imagine, the names basically tells you a little bit of a story. So for example, you, can, you have like these glass materials, but now I don't see anything. Uh, why? I'm going to tell you. So for example, the translucent, it doesn't look that well. Uh, for example, the blown glass, it's very difficult to see, maybe because of the background. Let, let's change the background. So let's do that. Let's change the, back, the color of the background. We go to graphics colors, display, background, and let's put white. Maybe that give you a little more. Okay, so now I see that uh, it looks okay. It's, it's but let me show you why why it doesn't look that good. It's because in order to get um, a better quality image, you need to use a, a different render uh, render mode if you want. But uh, this render mode is something that is gonna I'm gonna show you. It's gonna, it's not yet ready um for everyone but let me show you uh, let me show you to you anyway so if you go to tachyon and i'm going to show you now how to get this uh from a different way you can get uh, a much nicer um transparent uh, or in this case blown glass representation the blown glass has this property that uh it reflects the light differently depending on the angle uh in coming from the light so Okay, so how can I get this nicer transparent? Uh, or oh, let me change, let me change the color because I don't like the red. So let's do, let's do maybe cyan. No. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Let's do blue. Okay, so usually when you get this. Uh, and you want you and you're ready you have your scene ready you can get uh, a nicer image by going to file render and here you can use um, if your machine has it um, this tachyon which are what john's uh, showed and this is gonna use um, a lot of these uh, ray tracing options that john mentioned so that you can get this this image so let's do this Tachyon internal, so let's render. Uh, and now this, this is a figure that you get. And you can see the difference between the, on the left, we have the render image, this is an image using Tachyon. And on the right, we have the OpenGL display using the GLSL render mode. So you can see that there are, uh, there are differences, okay? Uh, in, the, in the final product. Okay, let me show you another example. Uh, okay, so now I, I'm gonna load a different system. Uh, okay, so this is a this is a uh, a membrane protein that ha uh, has a, um, uh, a peripheral protein that has a, a hem group here with a drug. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so. Let's go to this one. And what I wanted to show is that uh, the usage of uh, reflective materials. So I'm not gonna make these materials reflective. This is the membrane, this is the protein, but I wanted to show how you can cleverly manipulate the scene so that you can get a different view and you can see, you will be able to see uh, the idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this representation here that basically, um, is kind of like uh, some number of water molecules that are next to the, the protein. And I'm gonna go over 
and position myself looking at these water molecules from the a position between the water and the and the and the protein. Okay, so in order to do that. I'm going to use one plugin that helps navigate in the scene. So let me show you how what the plugin is. So um, let's say I start from here. So let's go to extensions visualization and click on camera navigator. So now camera navigator, while it's active, basically gives you controls from the, so the scene so you can navigate similarly to what you would do with a space uh, ship. You can thrust forward, you can go backward, you can rotate. So that gives you like a more quantitative um, 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 control over where you are in your scene, okay? So let's do that. Let's press Q and I can do that and base, and let me do something like this. I can rotate with the mouse and at the same time, basically this looks like a zoom in, but it's not a zoom in actually. It's it, actually I'm moving the camera towards the system. Why is this taking? Okay. Let me reduce the, the size of the window so it's a little bit faster. And let me also uh, hide the lipids. I really don't need the lipids at this point. Okay, so now it's faster. So I'm pressing Q and I'm rotating. Okay, and uh, let me show you, I can go through through the, the membrane. I can use the translate mode to orient myself and go forward, the translate mode and go forward. Okay, so now uh, that I'm kind of like looking at the water uh, molecules, the water molecules, let me show you, have these um, licorice drawing method, but I can use also Van der Waals and I can increase the scale um, they are just spheres. And this material, Artichrome, is one of the materials that has this reflective property, this mirror and, um, and a, specific, a specific shininess. So let's, let's see how it looks when I use, when I render this, okay? So let's go and pop up the lipids again that are here. Uh, okay, and let's go to render and tachyon. Okay, so you can tell the difference between the two. And now these, these uh, spheres are, are kind of re reflecting the scene. So I'm having a look at my, my protein from a different point. But again, this is not the best use because I haven't activated any of the ray tracing options. So let's go to the display, display settings. And here in the bottom, we have a set of ray tracing options like shadows, ambient occlusion, and depth of field. So let's Switch this on. So now I, I'm, uh, the ray tracing is going to track the shadows and the ambient occlusion. And now let's render again. It's rendering. And so that one is rendering on the CPU. All oh, right, yeah, I should, I should have used the other one. I would, so just for your information, not only are GPUs faster at uh, OpenGL, but when it comes to things like the ray tracing, they're about, uh, oh, I'd say about twenty times faster than the CPU, maybe more. Okay, so now we can compare between this one and this one, and you can, you can tell the difference. So let's do one more thing before before we break for for um, for the so let's change this to tachyon uh, interactive the tachyon optics interactive which is gpu accelerated so if you have a gpu that supports this now you can run um, you can render something that is actually first is much faster <laughs> and the second thing is that now you i can the same way i can move um, around the scene i can move in the in the render in the render view okay so I can, for example, zoom in in the in here, and it takes a while, but it's uh, it's very powerful. 
one thing that's different one of the reasons why the interactive ray tracer responds instantaneously to his movements is it uses a progressive refinement uh rendering technique so where when he ran it on the cpu before it ran a certain number of stochastic samples per pixel and it ran all of them before it returned the image whereas what he's getting now while he sits still it's accumulating more and more and more samples so the image gets better the longer he holds still and somebody's got a question with their hand up hey there yeah so uh in the render view can you make edits to like the positions of these particles or do you have to rerun the render so yeah. this this is actually the key difference between this new uh, full time ray tracing feature that's the display mode versus what these render uh, modes do. So when you're in the render menu, uh, essentially VMD's normal graphical interface is inactive, and you are not able to change anything about the scene or the atomic positions or anything, um, and so that when you're using render the only thing that's happening is where we've we've basically encapsulated the existing molecular scene and we're feeding it to a rendering engine some of them are real-time engines but they while they're doing that there's no interaction with the normal vmd gui when if it, if uh, mariano does the new interactive ray tracing mode then that would be an example where actually he can pick an atom, move it around, and do all those other things like you usually would in OpenGL. And so that's the key difference between this new rendering mode and the uh, existing rendering features. The render menu, you can't do those things with the new rendering mode, you can. Yeah, let me show you how. So that was a still image. The final product was a still image. So now if we go to display render mode, uh, Tachyon RTX uh, real time ray tracing. So now the OpenGL display has these uh, features, and I can move around and I can, for example, pop on and off the lipids, for example, which uh, curiously has a lot of influence on the light because it blocks the light. So, for example, I can change uh, the material of the water. So instead of using RT Chrome, I can use, for example, um, AO Chalky which has a different type of uh, property, so it doesn't reflect. So I can use steel, for example, but it's inside the same, uh, the same uh, OpenGL display, okay? Yeah, so the, what's nice is uh, with the new rendering mode, all of the regular GUIs are still active. So in fact, you can drag an atom right now, if you want, Mariano, you can uh, use the select one of the atoms and move it around with the mouse move and uh, drag things around in the scene. You can edit the structure, you could play a trajectory, all the things that you would normally do in the OpenGL window are still available to you when you're in this rendering mode. And in fact, even his uh, camera navigator plugin, all that stuff should work fine with the, the other rendering mode. Yeah, I think the camera navigator is interfering with this. And is that using the GPU or is that just on CPU that you're able to move the or like remove the lipids, change the affect of the scene with this kind of reflective. So I, that's that's all the, G, this is all on the GPU. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just worrying about, okay, so for those of us who, uh, you know, even though you said, you know, like you, we should, if we were wanting to use the GPU for accelerated processing, we should get the NVIDIA. Um, Right now, I'm just running only able to run on my CPU because I do have an AMD graphics card. Right. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that before I try to render out my scene, um, I have everything in position and I'm able to kind of get like a preview of what these reflections are going to look like before I try to do that. Yeah, so the the short answer is on the, in the CPU case, we don't really have a uh, similar kind of preview capability, at least not yet. If you had a very powerful workstation uh, with enough CPU cores, you can actually run a CPU ray tracer that has, uh, like the Osprey ray tracer, has the ability to interactively render the scene. 
but it's still not fast enough for that new rendering mode that uh, Mariano just showed. So it's still, it's something that's in the render menu. You can definitely uh, go back and forth between the VMD GUI and the render menu and dial in your choice of materials. It's definitely less convenient than the new full-time ray tracing mode. That's why we put all the effort in to develop it. But uh, this is an area where I expect, you know, in the future, we're going to get more ray tracing acceleration uh, from other vendors, uh, software solutions. And even, even on the uh, CPUs, I expect Intel is going to continue doing development of Osprey, for example. So at least on Intel CPUs, you'll have a you know, very high performance ray tracing engine that's hardware optimized. Awesome, thank you. And I should, I should point out for those that use Macs, the bleeding edge uh, latest builds of VMD for Mac OS do have the Intel Osprey Ray Tracer included. So uh, you do have the CP, you do have the uh, Tachyon, the one that I wrote, and the Tachyon Osprey, which is based on Intel's ray tracing engine. So you do have one of the interactive ray tracers is there even on Mac OS, even without the GPU support. So there is a, a solution there at least. Um, it works better with the faster CPU, of course. More CPU cores, the better. Okay, I think we can stop here. Uh, and I, I have a few more things that I wanted to show, and I can do that on the on the afternoon and the, at the beginning of the afternoon session, uh, so that we continue on a schedule. Uh, let's do the break now, and uh, let's reconvene at uh, ten forty-five. I was going to say, uh, I have another Zoom call that goes from noon to 1.30, so I won't be there to answer questions during the official Q&A session today. Uh, but if you guys have questions for me now, I'm here right now, and I could be available on you know other days. So any, yeah. any questions for me, please go ahead and ask now if you've got them. Well, Mariano, I thought your demo went well. Thanks. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I have. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to show, I didn't have time now, but, uh, but I'm gonna show you in the afternoon is that. Um, so you can save your work and you can save this VMD state, and also you can play around with the visual, uh, camera angles, and you can save those camera angles to focus on different things and switch back and forth between them, and at the same time use these camera angles to generate a collection of uh, pos a position of the camera so that you can create a movie um, using some of the plugins that I'm gonna explain a little bit more. So I'm gonna transition between um, visualization and creating to create a mo movies um, with BMD. So hopefully cool. if you're interested in that, um, we can continue uh, in the afternoon. So let's do a break and let's come back at uh, 10 to 